welcome to the Beyond Jiu-Jitsu podcast. This is episode 133. I'm your co-host. Whenever something like this happens, I always think, imagine if this is someone's first episode. <laughs> well, I mean, fuck it. Let them know how we roll here straight away. Kieran Lefebvre, Adam Childs. Don't know why I did a Zoyberg. Yep. Coffee's kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> Got a <to> poop. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, guys, episode 133. This is a Kieran special. I'm going home. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. No, we're talking about some up-and-coming activities for Kieran. Yes. So if, if you're listening to this, uh, you know, right after release, which is the, the 10th of March, is the date that this Oh, this comes out 10th of March. Best day of the year. One. Why is that the best day of the year, Kieran? Oh, I wonder why. Um, <laughs> is that your birthday? It's my birthday. Oh. <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday, Kieran. <laughs> Let's get a happy birthday in the comments. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, so on episode 131, we mentioned that unfortunately I had to withdraw from the subversion qualifiers. Furious. That's the upcoming uh, event <laughs> that is like a – Super I fire. mean, yeah, local sort of who's number one event yeah. here in Australia where you just have your fixed matches. Yep. I, I got asked to be one of the commentators on it. Yeah, so, so you can um, tune in on Flow Grappling so, as well. Look out for me. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to delete you from this episode, bro. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, to actually be on Flow Grappling, we had a whole bunch of banter about Kieran essentially saying that I'm better than Joe Rogan now. Yeah, <laughs> oh, uh, equivalent. <laughs> equivalent. So, uh, but Kieran was going to fight qualifiers yes. because for the – the blue belts, you can win qualifiers to make it onto the main card. Yep. Kieran was Gunning chomping at the bit for that because yeah. one of the guys also registered for it. It's a wrong that Kieran needs to right. Yes. The guy that he lost to that he should have beaten. Yep. Uh, Still long story on. short, to bring people up to speed, Kieran took his back pretty much right at the start of the match, had him in a rear naked choke, fulcrum choke, yeah. couldn't get it. He escaped and ended up um, beating points. Kieran on points. So Kieran wanted to right that wrong. However... He's pulled out because. Well, I'm going to Canada. Ba, ba, ba. Hey, going to go eat some maple syrup. Hey. <laughs> yeah, going to Canada, eh? Going to Canada. Uh, yeah, eh? so, uh, I mean, I was kind of keeping under wraps until it was all confirmed, locked in, yada, yada, above board. Which is why we didn't mention it on 131. It was yeah. just sort of like. This is happening, but flights yeah. aren't booked yet. Yeah, flights aren't booked. And now flights, flights are booked. Are booked Vis- yeah. Visas have been secured. Uh, Girlfriend has left. Fiance has left him. <laughs> yeah, yeah f- probably for the best. <laughs> yeah. no, not really. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> and I saw that Jordan has already released it on his Instagram, like tagging me and stuff. So, so tell us why are you yeah. going to Canada? So, for those that don't know, check out Jordan Teaches Jiu Jitsu on YouTube. I've been working with Jordan for nearly twelve months. I think over twelve months now. We can- probably longer, man. Yeah, since definitely. you guys first started yeah. conversing, which was before Jordan was. I don't want to yeah. say. <laughs> I was, I was, I was about to say before he was relevant. I was yeah, <laughs> before before he bl- before he blew up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jordan and I, Jordan found me uh, on YouTube because we we're both small jujitsu creators at the time. I started creating videos about two and a half years ago when I first started jujitsu, a bit over two two and a half, but whatever. And he he started around the same time, not jujitsu, but creating videos. He left some comments on my videos. I checked out his content, recognized what it was, like fucking amazing. I knew. You know, I could see the the writing on the wall. I knew it was going to blow up. I think I was in his first like 300 subscribers, some shit like that. He was in my first 200. Um, and we were, we were sort of just talking about, you know, content creation. Um, because I was a videographer at the time, I could help him out with, you know, more technical stuff, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward, he's now a superstar online, uh, getting bigger and bigger by the day. Creates the best educational content, in my opinion, on jujitsu on YouTube. And we've been doing more and more collaborations started with us like releasing a course together but now which um, is the um bjj performance and longevity course yes you can check a link in the description if you want to check that out <laughs> <laughs> discount code beyond jujitsu is there one for yes that? i think it's oh. actually i think it's beyond podcast is the discount code but the the discount code is also on the why line. am i only just hearing about this discount code i don't know we've had it for ages <laughs> <laughs> You're like why i'm going to tell the three people that listen to the podcast yeah <laughs> Hey, we have four now. My mom joined. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so long story short, um, I've been doing more and more work with Jordan in terms of like helping him develop courses that he's coming out with. Not necessarily courses that I'm involved in in terms of creating the content, but helping him like organize them, produce them, etc. So I'm flying out to Canada 
uh, in two weeks from this recording or like two days from the release. And we're going to be doing a whole bunch of stuff in Canada. On the cards, we have developing the next six months worth of his course content, his paid content. He's releasing some more instructionals. But we're trying to like reformat it and try and revolutionize the way jujitsu instructionals are made. Because if anyone's seen even the most modern BJJ Fanatics instructionals, BJJ Fanatics, for those that don't know, they have a studio in Boston. Whenever they have an athlete that they want to create a instructional on their platform, if it's feasible, as in if they're in the North American region or, you know, wherever, they fly them into Boston, they put them up in a hotel, all expenses paid, they come into the studio, they film the studio in like two two days or something like that. And BJJ Fanatics does all the marketing, all the editing, they produce the video, um, they, they, you know, make it into chapters, et cetera, in consultation with the, the athlete that created it. And then they they put it on their platform. The creator, as in the the person's name that's that created the instructional, they get anywhere from forty percent to about fifty percent of of profit from that um, sale, right? And for for larger creators like the bigger names like uh, you know Danaher and Gordon, they have exclusive contracts where the percentages are probably skewed more in their favor, as in the athlete's favor in that case. But generally it's a 50-50 split or 40-60 or split in BJJ Fanatic's favor. So the reason I'm preambling that is if you've seen any BJJ Fanatic's instructionals lately, the content itself, as in the subject matter experts, is always second to none because you have people like Gordon Ryan. You have John Danaher. You have John Carlo Bedoni. You have you know all these other names and I'm not even mentioning even like uh, – Oh, so many, right? If everyone, who the who's who? Steve. Steve, Steve, Bob, Carl, you know, all the who's who of jiu-jitsu athletes is generally speaking on BJJ fanatics, right? But the content production is dog shit. It's terrible. I think, it, uh, you know, I don't know a lot about videography and all that stuff, but I guess it's a, perhaps it's just a simple numbers game, like, the, I think I don't think there's anyone who would watch an instructional and say that the production quality couldn't be better. I don't think anyone is saying that. But I want maybe the argument is saying that, well, it could be better, but it's not worth how much more that would cost. I don't know if that's mm. what the argument is. But if you look at instructionals, there are two very simple, not necessarily simple to execute, but simple things that, are so dog shit and could be better, which is A, the sound quality yes. is usually always terrible yes, because it's usually either just recorded straight onto the camera or people use those little mics, which lapel definitely- mic. The lapel mic, which makes it way better except for all the times that it's like <laughs> scratching on the fabric and yep. whatever and it sounds terrible. Mm -hmm. So I don't know a lot about sound engineering when I say a lot, I mean nothing. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know anything about it. But I assume, like, I know that boom mics are a thing. Yeah. Aren't they used in certain situations for? Yeah. So, so I don't know if a boom mic solves that problem. No, it's or, not necessarily the microphone. Normally, it's the environment. Okay. Well, yeah. Whatever it is, right? The sounds shit. Yeah. And the it's usually just one fixed camera angle yes right so and you have the camera operator they're zooming in they're moving around a little sometimes, bit sometimes yeah. or you just have the multiple like the person being like just spin around and yep. you got to watch them shuffle around shuffle around to yep. get another angle yeah whereas if you had multiple camera angles or mm -hmm. you know one fixed angle and one dynamic person on a on a gyro or whatever i don't know <laughs> um wait that's not the right word is Gimbal. it a gimbal, sorry. There's gyroscopes inside yeah, the gimbal, yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. called a gimbal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew as soon as I said it, I was like, wait, that's not what it's called. Yeah. But you know what I mean, right? There are two things that perhaps not simple to execute, and I don't know how much, uh, you know, it's obviously not simple to change the environment, mm. you know, or to fit out a studio with soundproof. Like, I've already or, got it. But Boston, you know what I mean? In Boston, like, they already have a studio. They just soundproofed it or like sound Just could be better. It. Yeah, they could invest some money into and it. And then obviously the to. third thing, which you always complain about in our gym, which is the lighting. Oh, yeah. You know, because yeah. I something that I'm not aware of yeah. as, you know, well, taking film, but light, you know, certain light comes off orange or white or yeah. just dog shit on camera. Uh, but yeah, the, so like fix those three things. Got to have- They're not entertaining to watch is, is the crux no, of it. They're not, right. they're not pleasing to watch. People don't watch instructionals necessarily for the – they're not expecting a Hollywood movie. They're not expecting like, 
you know, this crazy special effects and crazy stuff. They don't need that. They just need the information, right? And that's the, this is the, I'm still amending the case for BJJ Fanatics. They also have the monopoly on the market. Yes, there are competitor products out there. There are competitor platforms, but you've never heard of them. Yeah. And the reason I know about them is either I've worked for them or with them, or I've, you know, done my market research and checked out all the different ways you can format uh, jiu-jitsu instructional content. So you have standalone instructionals where you buy them off the shelf, BTJ Fanatic style, one ninety nine. thanks for coming, eight hours, got down to her, put you to sleep. Or you have platforms um, that are, are becoming more and more popular, but are a lot harder to pull off, but are high quality, um, like Submeta, for example, Sub, submeta.io, shout out to Lachlan Giles. His platform is a, a different way of presenting information. It's It's multiple smaller courses instead of it being instructions. Yeah. I mean, that's what recently they've changed it to with a lot of the newer instructionals, but previously it was just this one never ending, like two, three, four hour long video mm -hmm. that there were no chapters or bookmarks in it. So you would try be like, try find that detail and you'd have to sift through it all. Yeah. Now at least, you know, you'll have an hour have video, stamps. but yeah, you've got timestamps. Agreed. But I yeah. mean, I'm saying, it Previously, yeah, it didn't exist. Exactly, exactly. Right? So the leading this on to what, we're, what I'm trying to help Jordan execute and what we're focused in on is look at Jordan's YouTube channel and why people like it, right? It's because it's different content. You know, we're using slow motion, using 60 frames, multiple camera angles, voiceover where required, you know, commentary where required, uh, highlighting things with, you know, using video techniques to really – convey the the message really uh highlight the the key information right and cut all the the dog shit cut all the crap if, sound etc if if you imagine how awesome and there's few people you could do this with but gordon you could mm. because pretty much every single thing that he has shown in an instructional he also essentially has live uh, yes. competition footage of him executing. Exactly. So like for Gordon, you could have constantly changing between like him being in the studio, like seamlessly changing between that and then transitioning to, a, you, you know, competition footage with voiceovers and yep. like, you know, and it would be this one seamless, concise yep. bit of information. Obviously not, there's very few people who you could do that with yep. that are going to have the live competition footage of them doing the move. That's Gordon what, that's is what we're trying to can. pull off with, uh, with Jordan's courses. Yeah. So we're calling them courses, non instructional. Or even you could have it being pulled off in roles, right? Exactly. Just, you know. Exactly. And that has been done before, but it hasn't been executed at a very, very high production level. And I have to give another shout out to Lachlan. He, I'm pretty sure he has his, some of his instructionals on BJJ Fanatics have been produced, edited and done in house in Australia. And then basically just sent as a complete package to BJJ Fanatics to be hosted on that platform. Yeah. So you can clearly see the the difference there. You, you can see the instructions that are filmed in Boston at, at their studio because they all look the same, whereas his is filmed uh, and produced by an Australian uh, videography company that I, I assume that he locally sourced. The point is he has sections of his instructionals, like the body lock passing one, for example, where he has live footage from rolling, uh, and he and he does like the whole like commentary pause, et cetera. It is very raw, but you know, you're just getting the information out and that's it, it was super valuable. Yeah. He's taken that evolution one step further onto submeta where it's more interactive, where it becomes a course, where it's like uh is yeah, you actually a, have to answer yeah, questions. Yeah, exactly. He shows yeah. two um he shows two m images, right? And only one of them is correct, response to whatever, right? Yeah, and I yeah. think if you take a little bit of um, you know, you follow follow the 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 success of of Lachlan Giles and his content. Take all the good stuff out of his um, instructionals, all the good techniques out of his courses on Submeta, and then you know the the quality of content produced by BJJ Fanatics. You roll it into one. That's what we're trying to produce. So that's what I'm I'm here to try and do. So you'll be there for how long? Three weeks. And have you already got your schedule? Uh, yes, yeah, so we have a rough. I mean, I have all my accommodation, blah, blah, blah. Every, every, like getting over there is all sorted. Uh, in terms of our shoot schedule, at the moment we have pretty much our our minimum targets that we need to achieve, but we haven't broken it down yet. Yeah, and it's gonna be yeah, and you're mainly going to be like on the camera, right? 
Uh, yeah, that's to be determined. I think I might be the uh, was, how do you say Yuki? Yuki, the UKE, the the demo. That's yeah, what they call right, UK. UK, like, it's Japanese word. Was like, um, Japanese words. Yeah, that's right. I was like <laughs> teaching last night, and I was like, "All right, guys, we're working on single leg X, blah 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 blah." Or you know, Ashigurami for those who want to add unnecessary Japanese words to <laughs> positions that already exist in yeah. English. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, I think I'm, I'm going to be I'm going to be playing the the multifactorial role there. I'm going to be helping him like format the the content. I'm obviously not writing like the technique, but helping him structure it. Um, we've got a whole bunch of feedback from. Um, a, a small like um, focus group that we're going to be implementing into what we're producing. Uh, so yeah, that's my more my role. I'm coming in helping actually produce with the, the filming, maybe be a, a live dummy, helping the editing process and um, and managing like all the timeline scheduling that sort of stuff. But Jordan does vast majority of it. You've never been to Canada before, have you? Never been to Canada. Any, any, and you'll be in Toronto, which is where Jordan, yeah, I think it's Toronto. I think it's actually uh, east of Toronto, about two hours east of Toronto. But Toronto is the closest international airport. Right, right. And um, any time for some R and R while you're there? What are you <laughs> yeah. gonna What are you gonna check out? Yeah, I'm just gonna be skiing. I'm gonna fucking get skiing. some maple syrup, okay. <laughs> get some pancakes and shit. <laughs> Go for a run. I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be fucking flat out, dude. Uh, yeah, so I've, I've thought about that a little bit. I'm sure that, you know, we might spend a day here or there. Like, I'm sure you know, our, I'm sure our resident Canadian in Chad will be like. Yeah, I've, I've, I've like, spoken to Chad yeah. about it. He's like, yeah, man, I'll set you up. I'll give you a flannel and fuck it. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's going to be cold as balls. Like I'm seeing all of um, Jordan's stories, the ones that he's tagging me in. is like showing snow and it's fucking like snowing and shit and he's yeah, rugged up. Really he's like, oh, something. Still, still being real cold over Yeah, there. it's like middle of summer here, obviously middle of winter there. I'm going to freeze my dick off. Preparing you for for Sweden, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But by the time I get to Sweden, hopefully it's warmed up a little bit. But it's going to be a busy few months. So on the cards, going to Canada, coming back for literally like a week because I arrive on the 1st of April or two weeks rather, fly out again to Sweden, move to Sweden on the 16th of April. Probably shouldn't be publishing my my schedule here, but <laughs> what? you're gonna get swarmed yeah. at the airport. Get yeah, yeah, get yeah. Love we it. love you. Holding up signs. If someone is is sign Sweden. my sign my spats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, did I tell you about the new? Did that. I tell you about the new shorts that I've got made for the gym? No, send it. So they say. Uh, so the current shorts just have on the the front. Um, what would you say? Like the, the front bottom of the shorts, just the Vantage logo. Yep. And then across the arse, they just say Vantage. Vantage, yeah. All right. So the new shorts are going to have across the front the the logo and say Vantage on the front, yeah. just like down the bottom of, of one of the sides of the shorts. Yeah. And then across the arse, it says, I'd tap that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. You're really leaning into this. I love it. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm going to make some in the future that will – Similar thing, but instead across the ass, they're going to say that's tight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Man, be careful publishing that. Craig Jones is going to steal your ideas. Oh, fuck. He's probably actually, he's probably already got He's probably already got them. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's got fucking everything else. Oh, my God. Man, like we always joke about that no one, no one listens to this. But, um, <laughs> so I had, you'd be surprised the amount of people. Actually, probably not that many. I can count on one hand. But I'm surprised. <laughs> it's that, two. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I need more than one finger. I um, yeah, you do. Also, I don't know why this just popped into my head, but you'll be pleased to know that this weekend is the first race of the Formula One season. Oh, so be prepared pleased. for some more F1 analogies coming in. <laughs> oh, we haven't had an F1 analogy in fucking it's been, years. It's been man. a little while. Um, yeah. So. What was I saying? No one listens to this. No one yeah, listens so, to this. So, one yeah, hand you'd be surprised fingers. the amount of people who mention having listened to the episode about leaving Alliance. Yeah. So it was I've a been episode. I've been reaching out to a few of the athletes who are on the up and coming subversion mm. card just to be like, hey guys, I'm one of the commentators. And because it's a smaller local event, these aren't people who are on BJJ Heroes and mm. you can just Google them and get all their fight history and yeah, credentials. Yeah, have everything from like, you know, purple belts up. Yeah. So. so I'm reaching out to them being like, hey, man, just want to make sure I've got accurate information. Like where do you train? Mm. You know, what belt are you and who did you get it from? 
you know, what's your favorite submission and just like a, a bit of information on them. And so even in the, that discourse, you know, one of the guys was like, man, really resonated with me that leave an alliance. I listened to that episode, blah, 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 blah. But so uh, I think most of our regular listeners would know that I haven't, since I left Alliance, haven't spoken to my, my coach, Fabio. I mean, I'm, he's got bigger, better things to do. But uh, anyway, one of my other friends was like, was like, oh, dude, like I was, who travels a lot and competes and he's from Alliance as well, no longer, but originally we trained together in Brazil. He's like, man, every, all, all these affiliates I bump into, they've all like listened to that episode, wow. you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, mm, I guess my well, That's a bit of a calling guess, card. <laughs> guess my, I guess my relationship with Fabio ain't on the mend anytime yeah, soon. Yeah, dude. They, they've then, probably listened to it. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if someone from Alliance has Oh, for sure, it. for yeah, sure. And been like, fuck this guy. You, you're fucking, your photo's up on a board. <laughs> they got like strings coming off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking, Do not circle. serve this man. Yeah, you know, big like, circle around your face, an X through it. <laughs> and- um. And yeah, so recently another ex-Alliance guy who had been communicating with me for quite a while actually mm -hmm. about leaving Alliance, um, you know, I just shared my thoughts and nothing that I didn't share on the podcast. And long story short, not that long ago, he, he officially was like, bro, just letting you know, like I officially left and you were right. I was quite surprised at how quickly like they turned yep. on me. You're and, dead to him. You know, yeah. yeah, like not just dead to them, like quite – quite as if you've, I think like I gave crunchy. the example, yeah. like quite instantly treated as if you've left them to join Atos. Whereas the reality, he had a similar reality to me. He yeah. left them so he could feed his family. Yeah. You know, it was just a simple business. I can't afford to keep paying you. Yeah. Right. Very simple. Yeah. Uh, yeah, whereas you would think the same as if I have a student leave because they can't afford a membership. I'm like, bro, I'm so sad to see you go, blah, 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 blah. But like you're welcome back anytime. Like, you know, if there's anything I can do to help, I mean, obviously you can't give everyone free memberships, right? But you know what I mean? If there's anything I can do to help, blah, blah, blah. But no, imagine if I was instantly just like treating them as if they can afford to train, but they left me to train at another gym. And even if people do that, I still welcome them back anytime. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't anyway, need, yeah but I get what you're saying. Yeah. So then I, I messaged my old friend and I was like, oh, bro, so-and-so left Alliance as well, you know? And, and he goes, <laughs> he goes, oh man, maybe we should start a support group for everyone <laughs> who's left Alliance. And, but here's the kicker to be part of the support group, you need Gotta to pay, pay an affiliation yeah. fee <laughs> <laughs> and in return you get nothing. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's accurate. Yeah. It reminds me of, I was listening to Lex Friedman podcast and they had this guy on that runs a support group or like a, an actual organization that helps people leave Scientology because he okay, grew up yeah. in, in the, the church of Scientology. Scientology and uh, that I was having flashbacks to that. It's very similar, like setting up the support network, helping people leave, like setting up everything yeah, and yeah. supporting man, the family. Fuck, there's just so many of these like essentially scammers now like uh, or con men they may as well be. So, um, uh, you know, the, the classic ones are those pay me $10,000 so I can teach you how you can make $10,000, you know. Yep. But yep. one of the students this morning, he runs his own business and he went to a, what was it, like a, a business growth and development workshop thing, like mm -hmm. nothing out of the ordinary. There's yep. plenty of great resources to go to lectures or little courses yeah. or whatever, right? Yeah, totally. And it wasn't a huge amount of money. It was for a business course or workshop, whatever it was, let's call it a thousand dollars. I can't remember what it was. Mm -hmm. I said, how was it? And he goes, Oh man, it was terrible. I go, Oh, was it one of those like scammer comments? And he goes, Oh, sort of. He goes, he goes, look, there were like one or two little tidbits that were like, Oh, okay. But he goes, the more it went on, it became the guy was a bit more like started things, nothing to do with business started talking about like, you know, the nuclei of your black hole energy and blah, 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 all oh, this what whack the ass shit. And then, oh, and then no. the real, the real kicker was that then to get like the real, you know, like to get the real game changing information, you had to join their, their, their network, mm -hmm. which was, and I'm not making this up. This is real. $54,000. $59,000 to join their, their, you know, community, which is when you really get the good stuff. So he right? paid a thousand bucks for essentially an infomercial. Yes. And then, right. And then, but, but, but 
if him and his business partner do it, his business partner gets 50% off. So oh, of he course. doesn't pay the full 50 And then once he's K, in, he, he needs 30K. And then once he's in, he needs to then sign up six of his <laughs> friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah fuck 100%. Man. Fucking pyramid schemes. Yeah. yeah. Fuck those guys. And, and you're right. <laughs> this is a little bit of a tangent. But you see him all the time where that's how they make their money. It's like, pay me $10,000 and I'll teach you how to make $10,000. Yeah, man, that's so scammy motherfucker. <laughs> what you got to do is set up a course to teach people how to make $10,000. Yeah, $10, but the thing is the people who do this and who do it well are, um, you know, people that despite me being on a podcast and having a podcast with you, I'm not articulate and really very well spoken <laughs> at all. Say. Yeah, I'm not super educated, educated, yeah. you know, but – yeah, these people are those people who, I don't know, like sort of like politicians in the sense super that tongue, they're yeah. super articulate, yep. really concise with what they say, come across absurdly intelligent. But yet if you actually look at what they say, you the go- substance of it, yeah. That makes no fucking sense at all. Yep. But I can't put into words how that doesn't make sense. You know, like I'm not going to be able to, I'm not, at least for me and my level of articulation, you know, I was never particularly good at English as in the language and essays and debate and all those, like I wouldn't be able to counter that with anything other than you're a fucking moron, yeah. but I wouldn't really be able to put into- You'd lose a debate essentially. Exactly. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to put into, you know, high level words yeah. of why why this doesn't make sense and whatever. And yeah, these people who do these sort of get rich quick not get rich quick but these sort of like yeah pay me pay me money so i can teach you how to earn money yeah it's like you walk away with actual like the advice is good but it like but it just walks this line of it actually not being you can't implement it or you're just given all these buzzwords that get you hyped up but it doesn't actually translate to you know, dollars in your bank account yeah. sort of thing. So you're left, people leave on this sort of emotional high, high yeah. or whatever, but then it actually like doesn't result in yep. anything yep. because it, you were just presented with a whole bunch of like random fluff and none of it actually makes any sense. Yeah. I mean, I see, I'm even struggling to, to see what I mean. Like no, I'm struggling I, I to articulate. And that's been a big why criticism it doesn't make sense. against p people like, um, you know, they do these rounds where they go on these tours and they join up with other like motivational speakers in business or whatever. And they do these big fucking stadiums where they sell it out and it's like the music's pumping, the lights are going and they fucking get on stage, they pace around, the fuck yeah, like make money, I'm rich. And then you, when you break down these people, you realize that they make all their money from doing this. Yeah. So it, it doesn't make sense. A, a, a good example of one that's come into huge popularity is Grant Cardone. He, I don't know who that yeah, is. so he he he's done the rounds like he he exploded maybe like five years ago stuff. or something like that, and um you know he, he he's made his money originally from real estate, but if you look at his finances today, he makes all of his money. Oh yeah, I know who doing all of yeah. these you know public speaking things, and he it, he's not a snake oil salesman as such, but he's close. Yeah, he's, but it's, he gives just enough value to not be a scammer. But it's kind of like yeah. if you're into it, go for it. But I mean, yeah, I've shit. never listened to his stuff. But I mean, it's very I motivating. Think, yeah. it, it pumps but, it up. But I mean, it's different, right? Like, there's people who are very articulate, well spoken, and they're actually getting a point across. Yeah. And then there's ones that just are articulate, well spoken, and leave you feeling confused, or at least for me, leave me in a in a position of I understood everything you said, but I'm not buying your bullshit. Mm. Opposed to some people who are very well spoken and articulate, and they're speaking from a factual point. So, yeah. for example, you know. I'm not the biggest fan of listening to Neil deGrasse Tyson, like, but like when you hear him talk about stuff, it's not like you walk away from that being like, yeah, but that's a load of bullshit or that's a, you're just trying to sling some shit. He's just articulating factual information really well. Yeah. Right. And it's also why, you know, I'm sure a bunch of people will disagree with me here, but I actually quite like, regardless of the talk, I don't even care what he's talking about, but people, you know, love or hate Jordan Peterson, right? Mm. And I just like the fact that, you know, how well he articulates stuff and how he just ignore what he's talking about because that's not not why I, I like him. I just like when someone says to him something along the lines of, you know, oh, whatever, you're racist or something. He just 
factually and articulate articulately goes like, no, because of this, this, and this. Whereas if someone said that to me, I'd just be like, no, I wouldn't. I'm not racist. Fuck off. Right? Like, I mean, I just, you know, and it, it's, it's even like another example would be like, you know, uh, what's his name? Ben Shapiro. Yeah. I don't really, I'm not political at all. And I don't really necessarily agree. Like the stuff he says, I agree with stuff. He says he disagrees. I don't really care, but I just like how, how well, he like articulates stuff when people try to essentially like say like, yeah, but you said this. He's like, no, like mm. this is this. And just like very factually says this. And you go, oh, man, makes it looks so easy. It's like my friend yeah. Chris, like who's also a student, he writes copy, right? And actually we spoke about this. For anyone who actually reads the descriptions of the podcast, you would notice they've leveled up considerably recently. And it's because Kieran's been doing a, a little course in how to improve writing copy. Mm. And so Chris writes copy. It's not his primary job, but he used to write articles for, for like uh, for magazines and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So Chris helped me write copy for, you know, if I need to send super important emails or even for when I redid the website. And it's stuff that the sentence, I understand every single word and there's nothing fancy in it, but it's like, you made that look so easy to write such a perfectly, I don't even talking about the grammar, but it's just like, that paragraph, there is no fat left on that bone. Like it's just so perfectly articulated. It gets the point across with, you know, one was I had him help me write an email that was about a membership price increase, mm. which um, is like the first one that the gym's ever done essentially, right? We had our introductory price when we opened four years ago. And in that four, it's almost same. five years now, yeah. we've had one membership price increase right. Right, in five years. And um you know, and it just so perfectly written is a way to not make it sound like we're, you know, begging for more money or also not making it sound like this is why you need to pay more money. Like you read it and you wouldn't think anything of it, but it makes it look easy. And so these guys like Jordan Peterson, Stephen Fry, you know, Ben Shapiro, like, you Same know, nice. yeah, like say things really well. They don't say things like you listen to Donald Trump talking like you're a fucking moron, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this all like, of a sudden went yeah. super political, <laughs> which I think everyone's confused because you've just like mentioned a lot of right wing um, oh, I don't leaning. Yeah, they're very, very right wing. And in, in, in the American sphere, they're considered extreme right wing. That's why I had to throw in Sam Harris at least to balance it out. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't even. And you don't yeah, even like, know that. Right? I don't you, know. You don't give a fuck about that. But then when you say Donald Trump's an idiot, Do all the right wing people are confused now. They don't know whether they love you or they hate you. I, and yeah. the left wing people are the same. They don't know whether they love you or hate you. I don't, Everyone just hates you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Mission accomplished, yeah. Adam. Yeah. No, like I don't subscribe to all that right wing, left wing. I, got, I yeah. mean, I actually find it bizarre. It's the same in Brazil, man. Like people are like, oh, I'm Republican mm. because my daddy was Republican. My mm. daddy says Republican. I'm like, isn't the whole idea of a democracy to vote for the better candidate? That has better policies. Opposed to just like, Tribalism. it's not a football team that yeah. you were born into. Uh, it is now. And that's the problem with the two party system. And I think maybe that's where we should leave American politics. <laughs> yeah. Look, I don't know enough about it. I mean, no, look, no, neither we, of us do. We know nothing about politics. So keep your, keep my politics out your fucking mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope the guy who commented on our YouTube from the last video is listening to this. Like two dudes talking no, he's about- he's definitely uh, blocked this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah well, essentially we had yeah, someone yeah, say yeah, that our last episode was, this entire video is two people talking about something they don't understand yet trying to debunk it. That was episode 131, yeah. Oh, right, 131, sorry, yeah. the ecological teaching. Well, I know even less about politics than <laughs> I do ecological <laughs> teaching, so really talking about yeah. shit, I don't know. This, this anyway, episode all started I'm, strong. <laughs> all I'm saying is I find it impressive when people can effort, effortlessly mm. articulate, mm -hmm. not even necessarily arguments, but just points in a way that is mm. just Logic. like so concise with nothing. I mean, fuck, man. I'm here rambling. I just, yeah. I find it very impressive, you know, and it's made to look easy when it's, I don't think it is that easy, right? Yeah. Or maybe for an English major, it is very easy, but yeah. Perhaps. But it, it is in stark comparison when you see these highlight clips, which I'm sure you've seen. Take, again, nothing about politics, but take the example of Ben Shapiro, because he's famous for it now, where he'll go to these college campuses and talk on a topic, a very uh, politically, emotionally charged topic, Right the topic is irrelevant, but you'll have someone from the, the counterpoint get up and ask him a question and try and like stump him, right? They're probably been practicing in their dorm room for like 
you know, hours and hours, but when they get to it, the nerves kick in, they stumble over what they're saying. And as soon as he he gets on the mic and challenges them, they're they're in his world. They've well, stepped into his world. He yeah, does this yeah. every single fucking day, the same presentations, has the same arguments, the same counterpoints. He knows this shit like the back of his hand. I'm not saying he's right. I'm saying that he is so well practice that they have no fucking They have hope. no chance of winning. No chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like regardless of whether their point the, is actually it's right. It's the same as um, you know, like stand-up comedy. There's two types of hecklers, yeah. right? There's hecklers who heckle for to interact with the comedian and essentially like yeah. to get heckled back for the the laughing of yeah. it. And then there's hecklers who are like trying to argue with the comedian. Yes. Right? Uh the former is fine, but the latter in, okay, if you're at some small comedy club where there's only 20 people in the audience, the heckler could win, right? But, I mean, if you're talking professional comedians, you, the heckler is never going to win. Mm. You've got the dude on stage who has the microphone, yep. an entire auditorium who have paid money to see him, yep. her. So chances are they're on his or her side. Yes. You know, so my friend, my friend went and saw Jimmy Carr the, uh, the other day yep. um, who is known for going toe-to-toe with hecklers. And um, so there were there were two there were two hecklers two heckler moments that that came up. One was where he went in and he just like was like asked the locals like oh where is the you know where's the essentially dog shit part of the city that everyone dumps on right so we can make jokes that because obviously if he makes a joke about I don't know like Surrey in the UK or whatever people would be like, eh, like you know it's not gonna be a funny joke to Australians in Sydney. Yeah. So anyway, people were yelling out like Campbelltown, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah, <laughs> right? Which for people not in Sydney is a shitty suburb in Sydney. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, so then apparently there were these few people from Campbelltown who just wouldn't shut up to the point where even the um, the ushers had to come over and be like, you got like if you don't shut up, you're going to be kicked out because wow. they just kept arguing about about Campbelltown. about Campbelltown. But then there was another heckler that was like anti-vax, you know. And Jimmy Carr said something very simple that a lot of people have said. Well, oh, what do you do for work? He's like, oh, I'm a builder. He's like, oh, so you're not a biomedical engineer? So shut the fuck up, blah 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 blah. <laughs> you know, but it's the sort of thing that in a in a social environment that could then balloon into a you know back and forth argument, blah 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 blah. Yeah. But it's like a dude's on the stage with the microphone. Yeah. Like you were and never going to win this argument. funny for a living. Yeah. So it's a very similar thing. Yeah. Like if people try to argue with Ben Shapiro or Jordan Peterson or- They you argue know, for a living. Ne- Neil deGrasse Tyson or yeah. whatever. You're, the dude's on the stage with the microphone. Yeah. You're fucked. You're not going to win, bro. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. 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 Um, it's got nothing to do with- Nothing to do with Canada. your trip to Canada. <laughs> or jiu-jitsu. But, but, or jiu-jitsu, yeah. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Beyond are you know. hoping to go back to Canada? Are you hoping to do a good amount of training there too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to be living at the gym. I'm training the whole time. Like as in actually or yeah. you got a hotel? No, no. No, actually. Are you, sleep- <laughs> are you sleeping on the mats? No, no. I think I think he's going to set up a bed. Oh, yeah. Sweet. It'd be yeah, day, day, Daisy Fresh style, bro. Dude, hope you ter- I'm hope, at hope, the gym. hope the gym's got heating, bro. Yeah, fuck it better. <laughs> Freeze my dick off. Yeah. But I think uh, I'm probably going to train twice a day, just jujitsu. They, they have a full CrossFit gym attached to the gym as well. So we're going to go hit some weights. Yeah. I think we're doing a lifting challenge. I, I think it turned into a dick swinging competition. Oh, yeah. I don't know how it started. But I'm like, Surely fucking- you'll lift more than Jordan. Like <laughs> he, he looks pretty fit in that, but I mean. Well, he reckons he's going to outlift me. He's like, what, what we're going to do is we're each going to choose like two or three exercises sizes and whoever gets like the biggest total have you and seen he's the- like he hits me up and he goes can you do a strict muscle up i go fuck no he's like well that's my first one <laughs> ah, right. yeah it's quite a yeah <laughs> so I can't, I can't do movement. i can't do muscle ups very well well i mean and i don't know i mean i guess m- muscle ups are considered calisthenics right yeah, like anything body like weight. Three. but i mean it's like you know Oh, can you do a planche push up into a handstand it's like i mean you can take calisthenics yeah. to a point where it's like oh well Physically, my muscles, I guess, in those isolated areas are strong, strong. enough, but I can't do that movement. Oh, no, fuck know? no. Yeah, um, so I'm just going to I'm just gonna bench press. It's like if someone lift. said like, okay, instead of tuck jumps, we're going to do back tuck flip. back flips. Yeah. Like, but I can't do a back flip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, I'm but stronger yeah. than you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So no, I'm, no, I'm going to pick deadlift and um, maybe like just straight up. I think if I choose straight up like pull-ups, he'll, he'll school me. Um, so like maybe deadlifts overhead press or deadlifts bench press, something like that. Yeah. Um, some meat edge shit. <laughs> some meat edge shit. <laughs> Do you feel any sort of, I don't know, this is the first time you'll be meeting him in person, right? Yeah. 
Um, so I know you get a bit starstruck when you see Sam Smith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jordan, sign, my, sign the autograph. I love you. Do you feel a bit of pressure to like represent when you're going to be training in oh, the gym and rolling fuck, with your dude. students? I don't know how much. I don't I mean can, represent. I don't, yeah, really, no, I don't no, really care. I'd be more embarrassed for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can. Um, I'm sure I can talk about this. I haven't. Yeah. Anyway, it, we, we've. There's so much shit talk back and forth. Like, I'm going to smash you. You're going to smash. Obviously, he's a black belt. Very reputable black belt. He's going to fucking pump me. I've seen. There's videos on his channel of him pumping like purple belts, brown belts that are like, you know, 20 plus kilos heavier than him. Like big, massive dudes, right? So I've got fucking no hope. Yeah, but logically I think, understand that. Yeah, but I mean, I think you can still be a handful for him. I and I so. think, <laughs> I think, you know, uh, I think it'll go one of two ways in the sense that either the end of the trip, you're going to be more of a handful for him because I learn his game, or less. Yeah. So it depends who's going to benefit more from the learning of his game. Yeah. So if you go in with the first few rolls against him. Yeah. And he's like not prepared for how physical you are. Yeah. You might be a massive handful for him because yeah. he might have underestimated your physicality and how much intensity you can bring to a role particularly and no how gi. hard you can, yeah, particularly yeah. nogi and how hard you can be to submit. Mm. And then by the end of the trip, he'll be more used to that. And well, or yeah. it could go the other way around where you could go into the role and get caught off with some fancy loop chokes and some shit that you don't you know? do, yeah. And then by the end of the role, you'll be more. Actually, of a what we for could him. do, if you don't mind, <laughs> now this turned into a fucking a prepping, a prep, yeah, prep, prepping for prep to beat him, prep to beat you. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, rolling in Tobago as well. So maybe, regardless of how I do, I have like a little bit of time to prepare for him next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know he's got a savage knee bar. That's part of his A game is a knee bar. Uh, so if I can, well, I mean, I don't think I think less worry about Jordan. It's more that. You want to like when you're rolling with his obviously the let's say blue belt right which yep. you are it's a broad scale yeah. fresh blue belts experienced blue belts competitive blue belts you know yeah. weekend warrior blue belts 100%. but you want to more like what you don't care if you lose to Jordan because no. that's expected right he's, yeah, like, yeah, he's, a comp, he's a competent black belt 100 but you don't want to lose to one of his competitive blue belts like oh, you want to be yeah, able don't worry about that. you like, want to be able fine, to yeah. you want to be able to represent <laughs> yeah 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 i guess you i guess you no i'm sure like I, I know that the quality of his teaching it's going to it's going to be a tough gym it's a big gym as well there's a lot of people so uh yeah there's a wide variety of like people like the uh mike the guy that he does his podcast with i think it's they've renamed it talk jitsu uh he is a blue belt. Talk jitsu. I think it's called talk jitsu. I think it was talk jujitsu, but I think it's talk jitsu. Anyway, um, so he's got like people, people like Mike <laughs> that have been blue belts for a little while. Say it all. With yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> terrible name, Jordan. Oh, don't, don't, don't shit on Jordan. I'm he's, not shitting on him. I'm just telling him to. You he'll probably shit on us now. He's like, fucking. You think talk jitsu is bad? <laughs> have you heard of your beyond jujitsu? <laughs> what the fuck does that even mean, bro? Beyond what? What are you talking about? Well, beyond it gives us the wiggle room to spend twenty minutes talking about politics. Twenty minutes, understand. man. It's been like forty. <laughs> <laughs> you serious? <laughs> um, but yeah, pre gaming. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll fucking show up, surely. Because yeah. I've just come out of it. Like, to be honest, I've, because of the camp that we did, like the mini camp that we did leading up to Subversion, even though I had to pull out, um, I feel like at the moment when I when I bring my A game my competition game, I, f I feel the best I've ever been in jiu-jitsu. My, my game is best it's ever, ever fucking been. My cardio is the best it's been. Um, my jiu-jitsu strength is the best it's been. Everything like is, is coming together. My technique is way more fluid now. Like I'm seeing things better. Like it, this is, you, you know, ages ago when we spoke about like plateaus and breaking through. Yeah. I feel like, not that I was plateaued, but I feel like in the, this camp and how much focus I've had and doing the instructor's course, which we've, we haven't even spoken about, it's enabled me to have another breakthrough in my in my game. So going into uh, rolling with Jordan after I get over the jet lag, I think that, uh, yeah, I'm, I'll be right. <laughs> you've, been, you've been the source of a couple of nice little ego boosts for me recently as well. <laughs> In a, no, in a well, one one in a one in a like you suck way, and one in a, in a nice way. So the more recent one was yeah. So I'm taking Kieran and a couple of other guys through an instructor's course mm. at the gym, which is something that um, that I've just like written for, for yeah for people that I want to teach in my gym. You know, just to make sure people are on the same page, not to teach them what to teach, but to help teach them how to teach, how to teach. why mm. you teach certain ways yeah. for certain reasons. And yeah, so 
anyway, that's changed the way you've thought about a lot of things. But oh, yeah. on on Monday, I taught in quite a lot of detail what's a relatively basic technique in in a chair sit back take. But I went into quite you know small details, but very crucial details to make it work. And I remember like after the class, you know, like filling up your water bottle and you just like sort of casually said, you're like, fuck, bro, you know a lot of jujitsu. Yeah. And I was, you know, and I mean, we laughed about it. I think I said something along the lines of, you know, well, good news is when you know as much as me, you'll still be a nobody. Yeah. <laughs> like, just yeah. like yeah. you know, yeah. who the fuck am I? Yeah, that was but, funny. you know, like, I don't know, for me and my lack of accomplishments in jujitsu, I was like, oh, no, that made me feel pretty good. Because I do know, mm. you know I think I know a lot about jujitsu, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was that was a nice little unintended compliment. But the funnier one was a couple of weeks back when. So we got to go back a f- quite a few weeks actually. <laughs> back in time, <laughs> all right. So I was rolling. There was a night no gi where I ro- rolled with Kieran, um, Anthony, and I think there was one other person. I can't remember who it, it Jonas was. Maybe yeah, someone. Anyway, I was just. My, my, what I was working on that night, I was just religiously wanting to catch heel hooks. I just wanted to catch heels. You know, I've spoken before about like the leg game is not my A game. I've got such massive flipper feet heels that even when my heel is hidden, it is, I'm <laughs> me hiding my heel in, in leg entanglements is like, a kid playing hide and seek, but their feet are poking out under the curtain. Well, they're like covering their eyes. Yeah, yeah, dude, <laughs> yeah it's that's insane. right. It's like they're still, they're yeah. just there. You're a big human. Anyway, so, um, and I didn't catch anyone's heels. And at the end of class, we lined up and I kind of was like, you know, guys, there's, even when you're a high belt rolling with lower belts, there's always things to work on and always like, you know, you should never be satisfied. So I was like, I was like, fuck you, Kieran, fuck you, Anthony, fuck you, whoever it was the other person because I caught no one's heels and I was really like just, you know, a bit annoyed about it myself and how my training went that night. Yeah. So then a week later or something, we had done, I think, the instructor's course or, uh, you know, I'd seen you during the day for whatever reason and you're like, yeah, see you later on, like because you I'd see you later in that evening for training and I was like, and I said, man, if I don't heel hook you tonight, I'm going to be pissed. And you were like, you're like, bro, you can't heel hook me. He goes, and you go, you go, man, I'm going to heel hook you twice, one on each leg. I said, <laughs> I said, I said, Kiri, man, don't, I said, don't make me bring my actual game. I said, I'm happy to play legs for the, for the fun of it and for the development of, of our jujitsu. But I said, if you want to actually roll, I said, I ain't even, I said, I ain't even going there, bro. Like we ain't getting into leg entanglement. I said, don't make me do to you what I did in that video a while back oh, where you're yeah. like, thanks for not hipping in, which if those haven't seen, it's on the Vantage yeah. Instagram. It's just a, a role where I, I had, had a body triangle and flat the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. Kieran belly down or whatever. And you go, man, you can't, it's like, that video is like a year old. You go, my jujitsu's come a long way since then. <laughs> you, can't, you can't do that to me anymore, especially with your bad knee. And I was like, oh. I was like, I was like, all right, bro. So then you came back to training that night, and oh. I can't remember how many minutes the roll was. All I remember like is, seven, is seven, I yeah. is I triangled you once, yeah. and I you fucking pumped me, and I did, <laughs> and I I don't know I submitted you with something else as well. Yeah, you got the, yeah that triangle because you because I was baiting it. Yeah, I was reaching back. You, I was in close guard. I was reaching back to blast past your your um your close guard like trying to bait you to shoot the triangle because I wanted it to throw it, to cut the corner. And you, we waited for there for like less than a minute and you're like, fuck it. And you shot it and you sunk yeah, deep. Yeah. It sunk deep. And then something else. And then after the round end, you kind of sat there, not looking defeated, but kind of sat there with a little bit of a like, oh, I need in your face. And I remember I, I, I just leant over and I like, I patted you on the knee and I said, your old coach still got it, Kieran. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and got up and walked away and you're like, To be nah. honest, I, I, I've i recognized that I'm the type of person, if we go too long without rolling, my ego starts to get a bit too big. I need I need someone to just well, yeah, like pump you're, me every now and then. I need yeah, to get pumped. I mean, that needs to happen on the regular. So I yeah. said to uh, Nate, who is a brown belt at another gym, who's doing the instructor's course um, with me as well, and I had a roll with him and I was like, we did the first round. It was kind of like, it wasn't really rolling properly with me. I said, Nate, roll properly with me. Like, let's go, man. You know, no. uh, not every roll needs to be me beating the shit out of you, but I'm like, I'm going to smash you. Let's go. And, and then at the end of the roll, I said to him, I said, man, 
you're you're a brown belt. You're still at the point where you should be getting the shit beaten out of you on the regular. I said, I should be getting the shit beaten out of me on the regular. Unfortunately, I don't have that luxury because, uh, you know, because I teach full time and I'm the head coach. So I said, that's why when I have Joey, one of my black belts come in, like that's why we go to war because I rarely have him come in. And like, so I take that opportunity and we go to war, man, because he's the only person who I have come in the, the gym who's close to my level. I said, think about it like this. Nicholas Merigali, one of the current best gi grapplers in the world, went to train with Gordon to essentially get the shit beaten out of him. Even Gordon has said he creates training environments and specific training situations where he's getting smashed. So I said, we're not even in the same fucking universe as Gordon and Merigali, and they go out of their way to get the shit beaten out of them on the regular. You're you're just a brown belt and I'm just a black belt. Like we should be getting beaten. Like who are we mm. to think that we're we've we're good enough at jujitsu that we don't get beaten up anymore? Dude, there's current world champions who get beaten up every day, you know, so you still got to be getting smashed. Yeah, and I think you when know? you when you start to get on the top of like your training room and if you have like too long with not that occurring, like not getting absolutely hammered or whatever, and you need fucking a level realignment. You yeah. need to be reminded that there's levels to the game. I need to regularly be reminded because there's a little voice in the back of my head that just starts chirping. It's like... You gotten a lot better, bro. Like <laughs> you know, that little I know it's lies, but it's like you've gotten better. You, you could probably take it. <laughs> I just need to be hammered. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we've rolled like twice this week, which you know we we don't always get to roll, right? And we've yeah, rolled, I'm especially rolling less now still because this knee surgery Yeah, you're still dealing with your, your injuries and you know, so we don't get to roll every day, but we've rolled twice this week and both times it's been a very important level readjustment. Yeah, what happened last week in one of our roles that got you a little bit upset? Oh, you fucking wrist lock me, you <laughs> bastard. I, I, fuck, I, mean, I can't even remember the last time I was wrist lock. And I, I, so you had me trapped. I think it was like side control. Yeah. You had like almost like a switch base. You, yeah, you had that that switch base. So you, you were giving me your back. I was pretty fucking trapped. And my, my hand was just by my, by my chest. You grabbed it and just started like fucking. It wasn't even a snap on. It wasn't like a. It was very slowly. It, 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 you just like grabbed my hand and just slowly bend it, kept bending, kept bending, and I was like wiggling around. I'm like, oh for fuck's sake! I just <laughs> I tapped out of like pure defeat. I let it go for way too long. I let it go. It. it Your wrist was a bit sore, was it? For days. Yeah, and I didn't <laughs> crank I, it, did I? No, you All just right. slowly applied it, and you just kept it like eighty percent. You weren't even like trying to break it. You were just hurting like. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, you know, and you said to me after, yeah, you could have fought, but you know, preparing for the comp and, and, and I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And in my mind, I was like, no, nah, like, <laughs> that's not how that went down at all. And then I was like, I, I, this is the first time I ever said to you, I was like, man, to be honest, I didn't like that one. I don't give a fuck about any sort of, you know, what some people can say, dick moves, like a punch choke, anything fair game across the fucking, you know, nose, like whatever, yeah. don't give a shit. Right, the rear like, naked, the, yeah, the wrist locks are savage. But the wrist lock, man, I was rear naked choke yet last night was a little over your face. Yours? Ah, oh, no, that was fine. Yeah, it no, wasn't was too fine. much over your face, but I was telling Chad about it this morning, yeah, and and Chad was like, "Was it over the face?" I was like, "A little bit." And he was like, "Good." <laughs> oh, interesting. I wonder when Chad's go. Oh, Chad's gonna be the not tonight. He's working. All right, next time I see Chad, I'll uh, have a little roll. He'll be the face choke. Yeah, yeah straight nice. up across his fucking head. <laughs> All right, guys. Well. Thank you for listening to this trip to Canada, political, Adam's not articulate episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, as always, thanks for listening. You can catch us on the Instagram at beyond jujitsu underscore podcast. Episodes are on Spotify, YouTube, all that stuff. All the links are in the bio, the description, yada, yada, yada. Um, I don't know if I have anything else to announce. I think – Next episodes will release. Yeah, by the time 134 is released, you'll be in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we're, we're going to pre-record a few episodes, guys. So you, there'll still be episodes while Kieran's away for work. Mm. However, yeah, by the time they come out. Um, I'll be in Canada. You'll be in Canada, bro. Okay, wish me luck. Yeah, bro, <laughs> you better smash. All right, guys, thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time.